He's bad, he's dangerous, and he is a thriller. Tonight, I'm interviewing Michael Jackson, who is speaking publicly for the first time in many, many years. Let me tell you how all this came about. Uh, I had asked him um, several, 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 earlier last year, uh, would he be a part of an interview? Not really asked him. We wrote a letter, and then we didn't get a letter back, and we didn't hear anything for months. And then one day, I was in my house, and the phone rang, and I picked up the phone. Hello. And he said, hi, Oprah, this is Michael. Michael Ho. <laughs> Michael. He said, this is Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, I said. This is Michael Jackson. I put down the phone. I ran in the other room where the executive producer, Debbie, was. She was over at my house, and I went, Debbie! Debbie! Michael Jackson's on the phone! Michael Jackson! It's him! It really is him! I go back to the phone. I went, hi, Michael. How are you? <laughs> And ever since then, we've been setting up this interview. Things have been so busy around here. A few weeks ago, I arranged to make a commercial with Michael. So I flew out to his California ranch. I did. Uh, I was really excited. I couldn't decide what, because what, you're going to meet Michael Jackson. What are you, what are you going to wear? So I had this whole big thing in the hotel room about, should I wear this or should I wear that? So my staff and I tried to pick out the right outfit. Should I wear, should I wear the red jacket or the black suit or the glitzy gown or just a kind of a casual sweater? I finally made up my mind and um, we left my hotel room with some clothes on my back and headed for Michael's Ranch where we shot a TV commercial. And shooting this was not nearly as uh, glamorous as you might think. Michael had to stand like a statue for hours while I smiled myself away. It took us all day to finish this commercial. So everybody has their favorite Michael Jackson moments, and one of mine is this flashback back in 1984. I was, I even tried to do a little Michael Jackson thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, mine. Somebody should have told me. Anyway, tonight, I talked to Michael Jackson himself live. Everybody keeps asking me. I mean, this morning, I left my building, and the guys were working on the building, and they said, hey, Oprah, when are you going to talk to Michael? I said, tonight, live. It's live. But today, we gathered together some of his best celebrity friends to talk about the man who hasn't talked himself publicly in years. Later on, we're going to hear from Brooke Shields and Dick Clark and Motown legend Smokey Robinson and Gladys Knight, among others but first up is the living legend who just happens to be one of Michael's closest friends she even got married at his estate Elizabeth Taylor joins us on the phone hi Liz hi Oprah great to have you talk to us about Michael you probably know him I think better than anybody would you say well we are so close we're like uh, so <laughs> brown <laughs> mm -hmm. we're like um, joined at the hip and uh, I could tell Michael anything and know it would be private and confidential and stay with him forever. And I know he feels the same way about me. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, Oprah, yes. I would love when I'm up at the ranch, you know, when you're doing the filming, I'm going to be there uh, to hold Michael's hand and uh, hold your hand. And I want to see you do the Michael Jackson thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I look forward to seeing you there. I look forward to seeing you there tonight, because Michael had said uh, from the beginning that he wanted you to be there, uh, not necessarily to be interviewed, but just to sort of t to be there for support for him. Do you think this is good that he's doing this tonight? Well, I do, and I'm uh, I'm one of the people that talked him into doing it. Yeah, he told me. Uh, I trust you, and I know that. There is such a vulnerability and sensitivity about Michael that people don't understand that uh, he can be very hurt by the press. Why do you think he is so misunderstood? Because he doesn't try and explain himself. He, he just uh, lets things ride. He doesn't fight it. Do you think, Elizabeth, that you all are such close friends because you have had similar missed childhoods growing up in, in the eyes of the public? Oh, I think that has a great deal to do with it, mm -hmm. uh, being child stars and uh, missing out on um, all the normal things that people growing up go through. What is it you want the world to, un to know most about him? 
what a good man he is, how generous he is, how real and sincere he is, by all the garbage written about him. Yeah, there's so that much. That makes me so angry. Uh, but I did think that it was time for him to set some of the things uh, straight on the record. Yeah, well, that's what we intend to do tonight is set some things straight, and I'll see you tonight. Okay, that's great. Okay, thank okay, you, Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> Michael Jackson gave her a ring, and she says they have crushes on each other. Brooke Shields talks about her feelings for Michael right after this. We'll be right back. Whenever my next guest appeared at Michael's side, she was the envy of all of his female fans, especially when rumors broke out that they were a really hot item. Brooke Shields joins us by the crackling fire <laughs> via satellite. Great to talk to you, Brooke. How you doing? Fine, thank you. What makes Michael such a good friend, do you think? Well, I think that his sensitivity, um, his honesty, I mean, as a friend, I've known him for so many years, and what I felt... How many years? How almost long? more importantly than anything, um, we were both ab about, uh, sorry, we were both about, um, see, I was 14, I think, mm -hmm. um, and I think because we both grew up in this, in the same business, and we had similar upbringings in the sense that we were, you know, we, we had to begin in this business at a very young age, we learned a sense of, uh, we had defense mechanisms that we had built up. And I think once we met each other, we realized that we didn't really have to be wary of one another. And that just, that enabled us to build a friendship on a very different level. Do the uh, unfortunate, nasty comments and criticisms about him, do they upset you? Make you they angry? upset me constantly. Mm -hmm. I'm, oh, I'm constantly upset by what people say. I mean, first of all, granted, you take, a, you take everything with a grain of salt, and there are many things said about me that are unkind that I don't find pleasurable. But people, so many people really don't know him, and they don't give him a chance, and they're so ready to criticize. And I think what happens is when you see genius, and when you see a talent that is just unstoppable and untouchable, the first reaction people have is to criticize it mm -hmm. because it scares them, it threatens them, and it sort of, it, um, in order to augment their own self-worth, they feel that they have to belittle him. And, you know, he's a sensitive human being who, you know, this, this, all of the negativity really, it does affect him and it hurts him. Mm -hmm. So I want to know what the real deal is, Brooke, between the two of you. Could you just <laughs> tell, like... What, what were you, now, I'm, I'm not asking about now, but were you kind of like, um, let's see, what's the word? Was there, was there romance going on? Were you all kind of romantically involved? Was there like ever an exchange of, you know, rings or anything or? <laughs> um, well, actually, I think right now, let me say that I believe that we're closer now than we ever were. I think we love each other more now than we even knew we did when we were younger. Really? We, we used to, well, because we had fun when we were younger. I mean, it was, okay. and we were Brooke, sort of a source of relief. This is a but, question. Did you okay. have a crush on him or did he have a crush on you? I think we both had a crush and still do have a crush on each other. I mean, I think part of having a crush on someone is admiring them. Mm -hmm. Almost, I mean, you have, we have a lot of fun together. And, I mean, it's almost unfortunate because we know each other so well. But, I mean, he just, he amazes me every time I sit down and talk to him about something does he feel and, Does he feel more like a brother to you, though, than, say, a boyfriend, though? It's hard to say. I mean, I, I find it's a love on a different level. I mean, I feel closer to him than the, some of the boyfriends that I've had. I mean, I feel more relaxed around him mm -hmm. or more comfortable with him than I do. So it's sort of, and I mean, I've never really had a brother. There is part of that. But it's like a love on a, on a very different level, and it's hard to really explain. And whenever I've tried to explain it to people, it's been misinterpreted. And it's a shame because it hurts him, too, when, when he feels that people misinterpret the way we feel about each other. Okay. And he... He did, he gave me the most incredibly beautiful ring that you can ever imagine. And of course then people built that out of proportion and they said he, we were engaged. And it really, it wasn't about that. It was a friendship ring that when he, I mean, when he gave it to me, it was the most adorable thing. He, we hadn't really ever exchanged gifts before. 
and <laughs> are you are you wearing it by now? Any Brooke? Are you no, wearing... I'm I'm not. I because I'm working. I didn't wear. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> that'll be that'll be its own show, Oprah. Well, as you know, he's doing his first interview tonight. What advice do you have for your your close friend? And what do you think of him doing this interview? You think this is good? I think it's good because I think people need to hear him speak, mm -hmm. and I think they they will only be even more warmed by his presence. They'll yeah. be more pleasantly surprised. I think a lot of what happens is people don't understand him because they have no real concept of, of who he is. They see him professionally and they have no idea what he is personally. Now granted, that's his prerogative. I think it's fine when people don't want to speak out in public if they don't feel like it. But I think it can only help him because the people that already love him will just love him more. Those who don't think they love him will just come away loving him. I mean, my advice to him, which I've even told him personally is to just be himself because yeah. that's what people that's what people are going to love I think you're right thank you Brooke thank uh, you. just a few days ago we caught up with Dick Clark who has some definite opinions about Michael Jackson Michael Jackson is his own man he is determined he is uh, he's probably driven when he wants to do something he does it and he does it to perfection I've had sort of a strange relationship with him over the years because I'm one of the few people who say, no, we're not going to do that. Uh, I treat him like one of my kids. I've teased him about he is my fourth child. Uh, I love him. I like him. I'm protective, but I will say no to him on occasion. I don't care if he's a star. Uh, he is. He doesn't need me to say that. He's my friend. He came over to dinner one night and I said, Michael, things are going great, but I'm worried about you. He said, oh, really? What do you mean? He said, you're getting more and more inward. You're getting so reclusive. Why don't you get out amongst the people? I said, oh, I can't. I can't. I can't have so many people. I said, you love going to Disneyland. Get a fat suit. So said, what's a fat suit? I, I showed him. He did indeed do that. He did get out into public, but it's so hard for people who get to be so popular. They can't go to the hardware store. I used to run into it at the ice cream store in Encino. And those were the good old days. And I, I want him to get some of that back. Next, Motown legends who knew Michael from the very start tell about the boy wonder who grew up to be the world's biggest superstar. Uh, joining me now are some of Michael's celebrity friends who've seen him grow from uh, child prodigy to the biggest star he is in the world. Legendary singer Smokey Robinson. He remembers young Michael as talented beyond his years like an old soul trapped in the body of a boy. And my next guest produced this smash hit movie about the Jacksons. So producer Suzanne DePass convinced Barry Gordy and the rest is history. Next up is the woman whose exotic look graced hundreds of magazine covers. Michael cast her as an Egyptian queen in his video, Remember the Time. She's supermodel Iman. Iman, what was your experience with him now, the Michael Icon superstar? I found him uh, hilarious, uh, <laughs> uh, totally a prankster. I mean, uh, he, uh, and a very, very good kisser, I must add. <laughs> very gentle. And now meet the singing superstar who was blown away when she first heard little Michael Jackson sing almost 25 years ago. Please welcome Gladys Knight. Gladys says she is not singing, so sit down. Yeah. <laughs> so when do, when do you remember the first time you ever saw him? Yeah, I do. Really? I, I thought he was so magnificent. You know, it's, it's, it's I don't know. I, I felt something from this group of young kids. So what did you do? <laughs> well, let's clear this up, Oprah. Yeah, okay? let's clear it up. Let's clear this up okay. once and for all. Um, Joe Jackson and Catherine were very into their children, uh -huh. and they were struggling trying to get these young men um, introduced uh -huh. into the entertainment world. And um, Joe had come by. He would bring them by the theater every single day. Uh -huh. And we were there for like you know, a whole week. They would sit in the dressing room, like Michael's little legs dangling off the sofa mm -hmm. and stuff. 
and uh, Joe had come to us, and the Pips were, were, were really more familiar with the guys than I was. Uh -huh. And they had been talking about them for the longest time. Uh -huh. So um, I said, well, hey, let me see what I can do. So I went, and I, we were with Motown at the time, and I went and I called the company, and I asked them if they could send a representative out to see these young kids because they were performing on the talent show that Wednesday night. And I didn't carry a whole lot of weight at the company at that time, okay? Yeah. And uh, they said, well, we'll do the best we can. We'll yeah. see what we can do. Okay, so who took them in? Now, see, because this is, I'm just now hearing that Gladys is the person who started all this, because all these years we heard Diana Ross saw them and discovered them. And where did you come in, Suzanne? I was with um, Motown for about, I had been with them for about 14 days. <laughs> and was living in an apartment building where another artist at the company, Bobby Taylor, lived. Uh -huh. And he called me because he knew I worked in Barry Gordy's office. Mm -hmm. And he said, you've got to come down here and see something in my apartment. I said, yeah, right, Bobby. I'm really coming to your apartment. <laughs> so anyway. Get some etchings, yes. Well, right. He said, no, 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 really, huh? Yeah. Oh, anyway, so he said, no, really, come down. And I went down to his apartment. And there, sort of stretched out across the living room floor, were Michael and his brothers, and Joe, and a couple of other people who were with them at the time. And I was like, curious, and he clapped, Bobby clapped his hands, and he says, okay, boys, get up, let's sing. And Michael and his brothers got up, and they sang a cappella, mm -hmm. and it really blew me away. I mean, it's so stunning to think about this little eight-year-old boy looking up at me, going, can I have some candy? You know, <laughs> to this yeah. icon on stage at the Super Bowl, I mean, and all of the things in between, it's amazing. Like Suzanne said, uh, he, he uh, at the Super Bowl, man, he, he was like the Super Bowl to me because I was very disappointed with the game. <laughs> but, you know, just to see him. He, uh, <laughs> well, one of the things I intend to ask him about tonight, Suzanne, and you can give us some insight on this, if it was so clear that he was the superstar of the group, did that bring about resentment with the other brothers? I know the, the party line has always been everybody just loves everybody else, but when there is one child, one sibling who is, you know, obviously so, so um, outstanding in a group like this, did it cause tension with the other brothers? Well, not at first. At first, it was all about making it together and being a group and part of what I think their impact was when they first came out was there was somebody of an age for almost all of the girls. Oh, yes, who yes, were yes, great Suzanne. Fans. Suzanne, yes. let yes. me stop you right here. For the longest time, I wanted to marry Jackie Jackson when <laughs> it was first started. That was my goal, to marry Jackie Jackson. I, yeah, I think case, I was about right? 13 at the time, but yes, yes. Yeah, so... So in that regard, the newness of their celebrity and the excitement that they shared as siblings who loved each other was for quite a while okay. But as it wore on, it absolutely did cause um, friction and, you know, Michael got teased more and there were ways that your older brothers can exact revenge that don't necessarily have to do with what happens on stage. Michael really didn't have a childhood. Is that, would you all agree? Absolutely. Yeah. I do. Absolutely. Yes. And what effect does not having a childhood have on you? Well, I, 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 it's like I was saying, it's almost like he was never a child when he it never came was. to being talented. He was, he was always uh, far beyond his years as far mm -hmm. as his talent goes. Uh, so. I can understand him not really having a child. I mean, I don't understand the fact that he didn't have the time to play like a little boy and, and, and to do the things that little boys do because I think that everybody should have that. I don't, I don't think that anybody should miss out on having a childhood. His desire to uh, play at a time when play was indicated was very, you know, intense. And he did love to draw cartoons and watch TV and... And he's a big gossip, you know. He loves to gossip. I've never had anybody who loved gossip more than Michael. Iman, for me, I could not resist uh, to work with John Singleton, Michael Jackson, Eddie Murphy, and Magic Johnson. So there was no way I was going to miss on that opportunity. But I found him that uh, what was very endearing about him, he had a great sense of humor 
and he could make anybody feel comfortable yeah. around him. So I didn't understand what was going, uh, what people were saying about Michael, that, that he wants to be alone and all that. I didn't understand that. Yeah. But what inspires me about Michael is that his humanitarian efforts. I mean, uh, somebody like me, who's my work in Somalia, just brought me to the fringe of what's happening in that country. I mean, as a humanitarian, we don't have a better spokesperson for heal the world like Michael Jackson. I'm shocked and inspired by him as a humanitarian. I cannot say more than, you know, about Michael about that way. Thanks, Iman. We'll be back in just a moment. Back in a moment. When I was at Michael's ranch, I met a young girl who really swept me off my feet. When we come back, we'll meet the seven-year-old whose best friend just happens to be Michael Jackson. Back in a moment. Michael Jackson, as we've often heard, is surrounded by children. And through the years, he's befriended young actors like Emmanuel Lewis and Macaulay Culkin. But you don't have to be a child star to get Michael's attention. I first met my next guest when I was visiting Michael's ranch a few weeks ago to shoot the promos. Uh, her best friend just happens to be the biggest superstar in the world. And the whole universe saw her uh, by Michael's side during his Super Bowl performance. Please uh, meet Amy. Amy, we're glad to have you here. And the day we were there shooting our promo, Amy wanted us to finish so she could go out and play <laughs> with Michael. Is that right? What's he really like, Amy? He's just like a kid. He wants to stay a kid, but he grew up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you spend a lot of time with him? When I go up there, I spend almost most of my time with him doing it. Yeah, playing. Mm -hmm. playing. What do y'all play? <laughs> what do y'all play? I play all the time. She's a child. Would y'all please? <laughs> Amy, what do y'all play? What do you play? I'm playing. I play on his rides, and we play hide and go seek. And, and how did you meet him? We want to know that, so we, we can do the same thing. Well, I was doing a commercial with him, uh -huh. and I was four, and I didn't know anything about him. And I went into his trailer, and I sat right up on his lap, and um, I, he said to himself that he was going to be friends for life. The two of you. Now, these are Amy's parents here, and I was saying when I was there that day, and I saw you all, and the whole family was there, the whole stand-up guys. Um, they were all on the rides in the amusement park after the shoot. I, and you. I was there, too, <laughs> yes. You were leading and, the Wait a minute, and what did Amy say to me? Amy says, you're not going to go on that grandma ride, are you? <laughs> which was the Ferris wheel, which is about my speed. Like, yes. So, and I said to you, do, I wonder, do your kids know how lucky they are to be able to come up to Michael Jackson's house, like, and just kind of hang out and have root beer floats? anytime they want. Um, you know, in the beginning, like Amy said, she had no idea who Michael was when she was four years old. He was just a, a nice guy that she met and a, and a friend. Um, our boys kind of knew who he was and knew he was a real famous singer, but he was just a friend. He made you feel so at ease and he was so fun to be with. And that's just how we are. We're just friends with him. Now, I heard this the night I left that you all were going to Toys R Us and they were closing <laughs> the store and you were going to shop a lot. Is that true? Very. <laughs> Well, one of, the things, uh, one of the things I intend to talk to Michael about tonight is that his... One of the things that impressed me the most is when I went to the ranch where we're shooting the commercial inside the theater there. There is inside the wall at Michael's house, there are beds for sick children. I was so moved by that because in order to build walls into the room with beds in them for children means you genuinely have to care about them. <laughs> My next guest is a mother of a young boy whose life and death struggle touched Michael Jackson's heart. Yeah. Young Ryan White was diagnosed with AIDS in 1984 and his hometown of Kokomo, Indiana flew into an outrage. Ryan was blocked from going to school. His family forced to leave town. I don't think he should be here. Um, if people with chicken pox and measles can't come, why should he? When Ryan died in 1990, many celebrities turned out to pay homage to this unlikely hero and the battle against AIDS. You know, oftentimes celebrities can attach themselves to a cause or be interested for the moment, but you know that uh, Michael's feelings were quite different. I saw a very sincere Michael and somebody that, it's strange after Ryan died, 
uh, I asked Michael, I said, well, what is it that connected you and Ryan? And he said, you know, most people can't get over the awe of who I am, so nobody can ever act normal around me. He said, Ryan knew how I wanted to be treated because that's how he wanted to be treated. Ryan spent five days with Michael uh, in 1990, right before his death. And Ryan was so worried about being a burden to Michael uh, because he, he couldn't hardly walk. He was very ill. What, Ryan and, went up to the ranch? Yes, uh, Ryan went to... Mm -hmm. to the ranch and spent five days with him and they did a lot of fun things and the first night I said well what did you do, did you do? and he said well we spent three hours watching Three Stooges movies <laughs> I mean I mean this was something that Ryan loved comedy so does Michael um, they went shopping and I, I said you know who drove and he said well Michael drove the Bentley and I said Michael drove himself and, yeah me and Michael went shopping how, how are you how are you handling it now how are you are you okay you're doing with Ryan's death mm -hmm. um, it, it's very very hard uh, I I have formed a Ryan White foundation dealing with adolescents dealing with all kinds of adolescents whether you have AIDS whether you don't have AIDS whether your parents have AIDS whether your siblings have AIDS so I'm, I'm keep active in doing the things that Ryan was doing and educating our young people about AIDS that is good thanks Jeannie Coming up next, some of the funniest things I've ever heard grown women admit when they reveal their fantasies about the man who thrills them, Michael Jackson. Coming back. Uh, his fans agree that Michael Jackson isn't only bad, but wait until you hear what else they think of him. These stories are so funny, they crack me up. Take a look at these. I'd die if I ever got to meet him because he's just so great. Oh, he's lovely. This is like this with the Beatles. Oh, he's so we see him. I love you, Michael. 23 years Michael Jackson has right. been in our life. Okay? This, Very big deal. Yeah. This 23 is, years. This is him. This is the guy we fell in love with, right? I fell in love with. I was planning my wedding at nine. <laughs> Truly planning my wedding. I was convinced that I would marry this man, and I am still waiting. You know, when I was five and six, I, my girlfriend and I were Michael and Marlon's wives. Would I marry him today? Absolutely. I still think I'm going to marry him. <laughs> I was so in love with Michael that the majority of my boyfriend's name was Michael. I wanted to be black. Literally wanted to be black because I thought that I could marry Michael Jackson. I know that sounds awful. And I'm not days, trying yeah. to be prejudiced. I would actually take Michael picture with me to the bathroom and put him on a commode. But, you know, while I'm, I, I'll straddle the, the seat. But while I'm actually using it, I'll cover his eyes so he couldn't see anything. <laughs> started out very small. Started out with me lying and saying that I had met him after the concert. Uh, my friend Lisa and I had met him after the concert. And and the, the girl was so gullible, she believed it, and I just went with it. And for months, I had her thinking that I was dating Michael Jackson. Months. Uh, she would call, and I would go, oh, he's so sweet. He just, uh, Michael just, I just got off the phone with Michael from California. And she's like, can I meet him and all this stuff? And finally, my mom said to me one day, you know what? Wouldn't you hate it if someone did that to you? We would have lovely children together, too. <laughs> I thought we'd make a nice couple. <laughs> I really was convinced. We made a pack for my girlfriends, me, Lottie, Brunetta, Miss Grin and Glenda. And we wasn't gonna never stop loving the Jackson Five. So Glenda, she liked Jermaine and she went into puberty and she came and told us like like she was our mother hen or something. She says, I come to tell you that I don't like Jermaine anymore. I got a boyfriend and me and Lottie just looked at each other and we just cried. We like we're not gonna stop loving you, Michael and Marlon. <laughs> I didn't understand that his last name was Jackson. I thought his name was Jackson Five. So I would get pieces of paper and staple them together and make a checkbook and wheel my doll buggy around town shopping and sign my checks, Mrs. Michael Jackson 5. I, I just, I thought that that was what his wife would do. I told you. <laughs> you cracked me up. I thought I was bad being in love with Jackie Jackson. Next, what happened when the king of basketball, Michael Jordan, came face to face with the king of pop, Michael Jackson? But first, take a look at one of the most talked about music videos ever. It's really quite impressive, I think. Yeah. Everywhere I've gone since I announced that I was talking live to Michael Jackson, live, that's live again tonight, uh, in his first interview in many years, people are stopping me and begging me to ask him 
everything you can imagine. So we sent some crews out around the country to find out what America wants to know from Michael. Hey, Oprah, I want you to ask Michael, how's he going to outdo himself now? Can you ask Michael if he ever has time to be by himself? Hey, Oprah, I want to know what's Michael Jackson's favorite flavor of ice cream. Hi, Oprah. I'd like you to ask Michael Jackson. Does he have a girlfriend? Does Michael Jackson ever intend on having any of his own children? When is he going to get married? You can let him know that if he has not decided, I think he's exquisite. I love to look at him. That I am single and cut. I would like to teach Michael some new steps. How does he feel about his young sister's success, Janet Jackson? I'd like you to ask Michael who his inspiration is. What prevents him from getting back in touch with his family? Let him know I'm available and I'll catch you later. Coming up, a look at some of Michael's biggest hits. Back in a moment. All started with a phone call and tonight, I'll be talking to the biggest superstar in the world, Michael Jackson, live, who hasn't done an interview in years. But tonight he's chosen to talk to me live and the entire world via satellite from Sweden to Zimbabwe to New Zealand to Indonesia. That's right. Leave it to Michael Jackson not to do anything small. Even his first interview. See you tonight with Michael live around the world.